Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to add page numbers to a Microsoft Access report. Now, this is a beginner video, so I'm going to show you all the beginner stuff first, step by step. We're going to do page N, like page one, page two, page three. Then we'll do page N of M, so it's like page one of six. Then I'll show you how to modify that so it's just whatever you want it to, to say, like one slash six, for example. Then we'll do a little bit more advanced stuff. I'm going to show you how to hide the page numbers on the first page, which is good for like a like a page, you know, like a header, like a report header. And then I'll show you how to do even and odd pages, right? So that the odd pages are on one side, the even pages are on the other. Ooh, ah. Today's question comes from Blake in Frisco, Texas, one of my platinum members. Blake says, I'm trying to figure out how to get page numbering on my Microsoft Access report so that it's compatible with two-sided printing. So the even page numbers are on the left and the odd page numbers are on the right. Can you show me how to do that? Well, yes, certainly, Blake, I absolutely can. And in fact, you guys today have it a whole lot easier than we had back in the day. All right. And it was a Tuesday back in the 90s when I first started working with Access. We didn't have the, the options built in like you guys have. So I'm going to show you. It's, it's super easy to do today. All right, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. Let's make a real simple report. So create, and I, I like using report design. I don't like the wizards and the other stuff in here, except for maybe the label wizard. But let's go to report design. And here's our blank report. I'm gonna double click right there. And I'm gonna set the record source to wherever I'm getting my records from. This can be a table or query. I'm just gonna pick the customer table. Okay, then we're going to go to report design and add existing fields. Pick what fields you want to add. Let's go customer ID. I'm going to hold the control key down. First name, last name, and how about notes? Okay, then let that control key go. Click and drag, drop them right about there. And those are the fields that I want on my report. We'll slide them up just a little bit. We'll come down here, grab the bottom of that detail section and slide it up. Okay, that's what we got so far. I'm going to save it, control S. We'll say this is my customer R, my customer report. I can close that field list now. And let's take a peek at what it's going to look like. Right click on the title bar here and then go to print preview. And okay, there we go. Now the print preview never takes this ribbon into, into account. So I always close that ribbon and then you can see what it looks like. Okay, good. I got one, two, three, four, five, whatever pages. Okay. Now on the bottom down there, I want to put some page numbering. So let's right click, go back to design view and under report design, you're gonna find page numbers right there. Click on that, you got a bunch of options. All right, here's page N, which is just like page one, right? Page N of M, which is page one of six. Where do you want it, top or bottom of the page? I like the bottom myself, some people put them on the top, whatever. All right, how about the alignment? Where do you want it to be aligned? There's left, center, or right. We'll talk about inside and outside in just a minute. I'm gonna pick left now and here's the option if you want to show the number on the first page or not if you turn that off it won't show on the first page which is nice if you have a report header which is like a like a title page or something okay so I'll hit okay and there it is it drops a little text box down here let's take a look at what's inside that text box because it's one thing to know how to do this kind of stuff but if you really want to learn access it's good to know why it's doing it what's exactly in there let's double click on this guy bring up the property sheet and right here we can see it says control source I'm going to click right there and then hit shift F2 to zoom in. That's just zooming in on that little box. Okay. So what's inside here? Well, this is basically an equation. It starts off with an equal sign. And then we've got page inside of quotes. All right. Whenever you see something inside of quotes, that is literal text. So it's going to put the word page in there followed by a space. Okay. Then this little guy, that's the concatenation operator that puts two text strings together. All right, if you want to learn more about concatenation, I got a whole separate video on my website. I'll put a link down below. All right, and that's going to add on to that. After that, it's going to put page. Now, the page here is inside of square brackets. That says it's either a field or a special name, like a special variable name. All right, and Access sees that, and it's going to put whatever page number we're on, on the current page, in that spot. So you're going to have page one, right, page two. Then we got more concatenation, add more stuff. Then we got of inside of quotes. So that's the actual literal of the word of with spaces around it. And then you got pages. Pages is the total number of pages in this entire report. Okay, so this whole thing gets put together. 
It gets put inside this text box, which is called text four. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of leaving it text four. I usually try to rename these things, right? Like page, num, text, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, normally, I only bother renaming those if I'm going to refer to them from something else, but you can leave it text four if you want to. It's not a big deal. All right, now if I save it, control S, and I right click, print preview. And down here in the bottom, again, I got to close the ribbon. That's one of my pet peeves. Who's, who's ever keeping my list of stuff for the Access Dev team? That's one of my pet peeves. You have to hide the ribbon all the time. All right, come down here. There we go, page one. And if I go to the next page, there's page two, page three, page four, page five, and so on. Pretty cool stuff, huh? Now, if you want to modify this at all, you don't want it to have the word page there, all you can do is come in here, design view. Once this text box is built for you, right? Just come in here and change it however you want it. So let's say you want this to be just like one slash six. You want to get rid of the word page, do that, right? You just want the number followed by a slash. Maybe, maybe keep those spaces there, right? Have spaces between them and then the total number of pages. Okay, let's try that, see what that looks like. Save it, right click, print preview, hide the ribbon, and there you go. There's one of six, see it? Two of six, three of six, four of six, and so on. However you want that to look, whatever you want it to look like. And of course, you can come in here and you can change the font and you can make the bigger, smaller, whatever. All right, lots of different things you can do, but that's how you can manipulate what's inside there. All right, let's take a look at what happens if we pick that option to hide the page numbers on the first page. All right, let me delete that. Come back up to report design, page numbers. Let's turn off show number on first page. Hit OK, and it's a little bit different now. Let's come in here, click on the control source, and open it up. And notice it adds this word if there, I-I-F. That stands for immediate if. That's basically an if-then statement as part of a function. And again, I got a whole separate video on the if function if you want to learn more about it. But essentially, it's saying if the page, if the current page number is greater than one, then you're going to put this whole thing in there, which is the page number we had before. Otherwise, with a little comma, otherwise, this is if it's false. In other words, if page number is equal to one, it puts in an empty string, right? Quote, quote is an empty string. So now what happens is if you print preview, you'll see that page one is missing the page number. But there it is on page two and three and so on. And again, that's good if you're putting like a report header on. Okay, you can add a report header. So like page one is like your title page or something different. And I got whole separate videos on how to do that. All right, last bit. Let's answer Blake's question. Let's delete this guy. How do we do that even odd page stuff? Well, that's what this last option is for. Page numbers, right down here under alignment, there's inside or outside. And I can never remember which one is which. One of them, it puts the, the odd numbers on the left, and the other one, it puts the odd numbers on the right. I think we want inside for this one. And we'll put that back on, hit OK. And you can see there's two of them now, okay? And it says, if you open this up, all right, it says, if page mod two is one, what is mod? Mod is modulo or modulus, all right? It's the remainder after an integer division. Basically, I could tell if something is uh, odd or even, okay? And again, I got a whole separate video on this. I'll put a link down below to it. All right, this says if it's odd, if mod two is one, that, is, that means if it's odd, do this, otherwise put blank. And the other text box over here has the opposite, if mod two equals zero, which means it's even. And now if we save it, right click, print preview, hide the ribbon, you can see there's page one on this side, right? And over here, now there's page two. All right, now you can see page two is right there. It's kind of halfway across the page. Right, it's kind of hard to see me zoom in. See, it's, you're not getting the full page. That's because our report width is smaller. That's one of the defaults. Again, this is one of my pet peeves, is that when they build this report for you with the basic report, it only goes out to about six and a little bit more inches. All right, but if your default page setup is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and your margins are usually half inches, right? If you come over here to margins, you got narrow, so you got half an inch, right? Quarter inch on each side. So you can technically come in here and you could bring this out to right about, there's the edge of the page, right? Eight and a half inches. So right there would be your half inch margins, quarter inch on each side. I like to bring it in just a little bit more because some printers will go over the edge of that. 
All right, you'll get warnings that your report width is too wide and blah, blah, blah. Okay, now we could take this and slide it over here. Okay, but we're not done yet, watch. Save, this is another email I get all the time. Right click, print preview, turn off the ribbon. All right, it's still not quite all the way over there. See it? It's kind of hanging out right there. Why is that? Anybody? Pause the video, see if you can figure it out if you're building this at home with me. I'm gonna go back into design view. And the reason why is because this label is left aligned, so the text is over here. So all you gotta do is go into format and then right align that. That's another note for the access dev team. You, you could fix that one too. All right, and now save it, right click, print preview, and turn off the ribbon, and there we go. And now it's over here in the corner where it belongs. All right, you gotta fix your margins, your page width, and then you gotta put the, the label or the text box where it belongs. Okay, okay. All right, I cover a lot more with reports and page number in a couple of my classes. I start talking about it in Access Beginner 9. Then we do more in Access Expert Level 5 and more in Level 12, including sorting and grouping levels because you can reset that page number every group too. Lots of different tricks you can do. And a, a lot of people ask me why my classes are set up like this. Why don't I cover everything about reports in like one level? I prefer what's called a breadth first training method. Uh, as opposed to depth first, right? Depth first would be, okay, we're going to learn everything about tables today, boom, right? Then the next class, everything about queries, boom, right? And that's okay. That's how a lot of books are written. But me personally, I think a breadth first way to learn is better. So we'll learn a little bit about tables, then a little bit about queries, and then a little bit about forms, and then a little bit about reports. And that's how I teach, right? I'll give you a little bit of this, then a little bit of that. And it all kind of meshes together. So there isn't like one, you know, report lesson. If you want that, then get a textbook. Textbooks are usually written that way. There is an index here on my website, though. If you want to learn everything about, let's say, page number, you can come to the index and search for page number, and it will show you all the lessons that cover page number, right? Each one of them has slightly different techniques. All right, but there you go. That is your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Now you know pretty much all there is to know about page number. Now there's more page numbering stuff, but then we start getting into developer level stuff, using some VBA code to tweak the page numbers. There's all kinds of cool things you can do, folks. But that's it for today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't wanna to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. 
I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.